This is Any More Cowbell, and it is Tuesday, October 4th. October! God damn it! Um, pretty busy week last week, uh, unlike the week before. Quick thing to start off with, uh, after doing all that work on the patio, I had to do more work on the patio, which was, uh, you know, sand down the edges and then paint it. Which was fine. I did that, and I believe I mentioned it last week. And then uh, also, like, the drywall for the ceiling was coming down. So I had to fix that somehow. Uh, And putting nails into the drywall only causes to shatter because it's kind of rotted, you know? So I had to put some nails up into it, and I got these, like, little boards. And I nailed them onto the the side panels. and, and, And just to help prop everything up and... And there's kind of a gap in between the uh, side panels and the drywall, so that covered it up. (laughs) So, a little bit of wizardry, fixed up a little drywall patch. Also, uh, the tape was coming off, so I just took care of that. I used the same paint as I did for the wood on the patio that I replaced, and... The, the the roof of the patio is just or the ceiling is is like really dirty. It should all be the same color, I'm assuming, but it's just I don't know. It's not as it's, it's, it looks bad. So when I painted it, you know, it, it really stands out big time, big time. Uh, I went to the doctor on. Uh, hold on, let's talk about. Sports, sports, sports. Uh, you know, and you know when I do this, if I ever remember to do this or even pay attention at any point, uh, it's all Arizona-based sports. I saw that the Phoenix Mercury lost. They lost. I thought they were supposed to be the best women's basketball team. I don't know. It was like fifty-two to forty-three, I think. Uh, I don't know who they played against, but it was 52-43. to 43. Um, I didn't see uh, much of the Cardinals game, but what I did see was the one play where the quarterback from the other team uh, was playing hot potato. Or not hot potato, he was, just, he was just dodging everybody that went after him. And then uh, he... They got a penalty because he threw it to, I guess, one of the defenders and not a person who's designated to catch the ball. I didn't even know that was a thing, that there's specific people that catch the ball and specific people that cannot catch the ball. And what's funny about all that hubbub is right after that, he threw it and got a first down real easy. Of course, the poor guy landed like on his shoulder or something and hurt himself. He injured himself. Silly. Uh, The Diamondbacks won. And, but I'm not sure if I'm remembering like an actual game that happened recently or if my mom was just watching uh, uh, an old poker uh, Texas Hold'em episode. World Series of Poker episode and that was just playing on the bottom so So go diamondbacks okay anyways back to the doctor um i went to the doctor on thursday for like a general exam but also for my shoulder you know my shoulder is still just kept hurting and i'm pretty sure i mentioned it but when i was you know, I was going to the gym, and I, you know, it's a, it's it's a, like a you know boxing MMA, and there's like weights and stuff like that. But I went specifically because they had boxing classes, not because I wanted to learn how to box, but just because I wouldn't have to think at all like what I should do next. You know, they just tell me, you know, uh, this combination, and then uh, jumping jacks, and then that combination, and then uh, uh, lunges or whatever, you know. See, I can't even think of what uh, what what the exercises were, but I know I hate burpees. I hate burpees. I'm not very good with the uh, 
jumping down and jumping up thing. It's a lot of weight to move around. So about a month into the, you know, into doing this training, uh, I asked, I decided to ask one of the instructors, is like, am I, am I doing, do got, am I doing proper form in these punches? He's like, what about this, like, it's like a left, left hook, left round hook, you know? And he goes, oh, you can do it like this. So I did it like that a few times uh, during the, you know, the routine. And one of the times there was a big loud pop. And I was not that my shoulder completely died, but it hurt. And it's gotten better. But I really should have went to the doctor back then. So I go to the doctor and I tell him, he tell him about it and, you know, she's doing these tests, and she's poking in my shoulder area. And uh, she she had me put my hand, you know, like on my stomach, my palm on my stomach, and then put it, you know, push it away from my stomach. I like, you know, push into my stomach, and then she put her hands and her weight behind my hand, and then she told me to push her away. And I guess she wasn't prepared or something because I nearly knocked her over. She didn't expect me to have, I guess, so much strength in my shoulder that I'm saying that hurts so that's always fun you know when you surprise somebody like that I guess uh, so she goes okay well what we're gonna do is we're gonna have you get an x-ray and then uh, from there we'll see how it looks and we'll probably maybe have you go see a sports doctor you know because I guess I just went to like a general well, you know just a general physician you know whatever that is and uh, and he might ask for an MRI okay so, you know, other other stuff that they had to do was uh, check my height and check my weight. And, and uh, the lady's uh, measuring my height and she's, she's going 5'11", five, 5'10", five five, mm, 6 feet. And I go, oh, good. I, go, I, th- I thought I was shrinking there for a second. I didn't know I was already doing that. And... Uh, you know, everything, everything was pretty good. And, uh, you know, like I said, general exam. I'm a guy. They got to look at, at the old uh, the old ball bag down there. And it was weird because my... This is a new, new uh, little... This is a new doctor I was going to. And it's a lady, and I really don't care because... I'm there to get examined medically. And she's a medical examiner, so that's fine. I just need somebody who, you know, I can trust, right? So she's in there, and she goes, hold on. I'm, we gotta, I got to get, like, a, a nurse's aide or something. And, I, and she said, what? And she left, and then she comes back in. And the lady who's checking my height and blood pressure and this and that, uh, she goes, okay, she's going to stand in the corner while I, well, you know, while I examine you. And I just look at her, and she it looked like she was being punished, you know. Like she should have a dunce's cap on while she stands in the corner. So I looked at her, and I looked at, at the doctor, and I go, I go, what is this about? And I go, I go, I'm an adult, right? I don't need a, I don't need supervision uh, for this. And she laughed, and she said, oh, well, this is just something that we have to do now. Uh I go, okay, you know, so I whip it out, and, you know, she's checking around, poking and, and grabbing, grabbing them down there, and and I, I've never had my balls grab like that, and it was very uh, uncomfortable, <laughs> it was painful, and I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't think you're supposed to, like, grab, I don't know, I don't know, I don't, I don't get my grab balls grabbed all the time. But like, like, like I can feel it. Like it felt like a ball. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, manhandle myself too much down there. So what she was doing was very uh, different. And then you know I had you know had to do the coffee and stuff like that. But which was which I've always you know it's not a big deal. Always do the you know turn your head and cough thing. Well, then she, like, shoved a finger, like, up, 
not in the balls, but like in between the balls and the penis area. Uh, it, it was really weird. She did it to both sides, like on the side of, of the penis. And she, and she goes, okay. And so, you know, she takes off the gloves and she, 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 you know, I put myself back in my pants and she says, uh, so, so how, how, how did you, how do you feel? And I go, I go, I go, there was no, no pain or, or, or anything when, you know, when I was doing that. And I go, well, there is now. Cause she was, she was pretty rough. And, uh, they said, I, I, I may have a hernia. And uh, so I get an ultrasound on Thursday. That sounds that sounds wonderful, right? Um, I think like my obviously my only real experience with an ultrasound is watching uh, movies and like nine months and stuff like that with with uh, uh, geez, Hugh Grant, Robin Williams. Jeez, uh, uh, I should know the lady's name. She's in a lot of the movies I watch. Uh, Jeff Goldblum. So that's gonna be interesting. That's on that's on Thursday. It's Tuesday today. After oh, and then they took blood, you know, and uh, so I'm just you know sitting there, and it's got like a nice view of a field. Th- this place was weird because it was part of like a school center, uh, a community center. That's right next to a school, so it was, so it was, but they're separate buildings. It was this community center, and it was just so they they're starting to do that now, where there's community centers in neighborhoods, and they're trying to integrate doctors' offices into them, so it's easier for the community to see the doctor. So I was sitting there, and I'm, you know the field is facing, or I'm facing a school's field, and. You know, she 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 uh, you know bands me up, and she's going to take blood, and you know, I'm just looking around, and then I start watching the blood go into the vials, and uh, I go to turn to look at the field, and the nurse is just like, you know, bent over in front of me because she's watching the blood also, but when she's doing this, like her 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 chest is exposed. She's got she's got a bra on, but you know I'm seeing seeing you know everything else in there and uh so i go into in my own mode of saying oh i'm uh you know i'm making a joke and shit <laughs> trying to distract myself as i go back looking at the blood and i i go oh, I, I maybe i should have told you but i'm i'm a little squeamish when it comes to the sight of blood and then she looks at me with a with a, a worried look in her face, and I go, ah, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. And she laughs and she goes, you know, I've had a couple of patients, you know, one, the most recent one is the patient. <laughs> she starts telling me about people who have fainted. One lady uh, fainted so hard that she wouldn't wake up, and they had to break one of the uh, smell sticks for her. And then she woke up and she stood up and she goes, oh no, I'm I'm okay, you know, I'm I, I'm sorry about that. And then she passed right out again and fell back into the chair. So after uh, getting manhandled, getting a, a peep show, I I had to get an x-ray for my shoulder. And that was pretty, pretty all right. Obviously, they, I didn't get one there, but I had to go somewhere else to get it. And I get there and I get the x-ray and, it, you know, it all went by pretty fast. And she goes, oh, I'll, I'll call you in two or three days. Uh, when when the results are in, and I said okay. Next day they called me and they said everything looked good, and they'll probably follow up with that sports doctor still. All right, all right. So I'm waiting on that sports doctor, and then the the old uh, ball ultrasound that I got to do. I mean I feel okay, but I'd rather not have a hernia. <laughs> Uh, that just that would just suck. Uh, hernia from from what? Getting in and out of my car to deliver pizzas. Um, this week was pretty easy. I don't work Thursdays anymore because I took Thursday off when I went to the GameStop Expo. 
and they just never gave it back to me, and I've never asked for it back. So, <laughs> so I just have Thursdays off now, which isn't great. It's not a good idea because I'm not making that much money anyways in general delivering pizza, and to have one less day does not help at all. Uh, Friday was terrible. It was Friday was like my worst night. I almost quit Friday. I had four deliveries and I made like 10 bucks and one of those deliveries didn't even tip me. I don't, I don't like talking about that kind of stuff, but it was just terrible. And I, you know, and the worst tips were the tips from like the furthest way. And it's funny. I, I don't like the, the, the general sense of tipping, you know, like if I was a, you know, if I was a waiter, I'd rather have a solid, steady hourly income than erratic tips because then there's spite that grows when you're dealing with customers that, you know, eventually won't tip you. And no matter what everybody says, you know, black people don't tip. And I've seen it time and time again, and it's always that scenario. Now, I will say this when delivering pizza. Old black men are great tippers. They're great tippers, and they got great stories. And uh, one of my best, one of my favorite customers to go to was this was this old black guy, and he lived in a trailer park. And we we would talk for maybe 10, 20 minutes at a time when I should be driving back delivering pizzas. And he always had a great story to tell me, and he was just an all around great guy to be around obviously I haven't I haven't seen him in a long time because so I'm no longer with Domino's so I'm not in that area anymore but it's always it's, that's what it, that's what it always seems like you know women the women don't tip the kids don't tip uh, black women don't tip kids don't tip at all because they don't know any better kids in general don't know any better not just black kids but all kids don't really tip uh like like that one kid who had the PS4 under his arm. Uh, you know, I obviously, I, I, I'm not going to say obviously, but I do pretty great with Mexicans. And the, one of my best tips was I basically threatened to, to steal and destroy their vehicle if they didn't like the pizza and they didn't pay me. <laughs> so they gave me a $10 tip. Uh... So it's just weird because Friday was just a bad day, a bad day in general. You know, I, I, I delivered, I took five deliveries. I think I went on three delivery trips. And then the next day, I made like 60 bucks, 60, 70 bucks on top of, you know, my hourly wage and delivery charges and stuff also. And I did like, I think four, 12, 12 to 15 deliveries. I don't remember the number. But then, like, yesterday was, like, my best night. So, or Sunday, uh, Saturday. You know, and Sunday was just uh, pretty average. But it's just very erratic, and this is not a good uh, way to live. There's nothing nothing too, uh, too spectacular about work that week, that weekend. Um, on Thursday, after I went to the doctor... I got a call that my phone is back. My new phone is is in, and and I don't remember. I don't think I mentioned this because I think I maybe did it Monday or Tuesday. But I went to T-Mobile to get my phone replaced because my main camera stopped working altogether. Like it won't. Well, I mean, it, I mean, sorry, it worked, but it just wouldn't focus, and that's not good. Because the, the other camera is the wide-angle lens, and then there's the front camera. So I, I need the main camera just for, like, normal-looking pictures. <sighs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I need it for normal-looking pictures. Then not only that, but, like, the GPS and cell signal wasn't was spotty at, at most times. A lot of times, my GPS would get disconnected and, you know, signal lost. You are now back online. This is what she would keep saying to me as I'm trying to find the customers' houses. And 
Honestly, from the way the phone is built, I think it's because I, you know, I don't have AC in my car uh, above 100 degrees, and it was like 110, 115 all summer long. So that that phone got hot. It got real hot, and the metal probably expanded. And it looks like the way that the antenna is set up, in and that it, uh, like the motherboard is only. It's not like directly connected. It's touching the antenna through, you know, just tension. So maybe the maybe it, you know, the phone expanded and it's not all the pins aren't connecting. So I don't know. I'm I'm not going to tell that to the T-Mobile people because either way my main camera wasn't working. <laughs> So I get a new, I get my new phone in, my new refurbished phone in uh, on Thursday, and you know they they you know we wipe out my old one, switch over my SIM cards and everything like that. And I take it, I get home, I restore my phone, so because LG man has a terrible backup system, but like I have to, I had to delete a bunch of stuff off my phone. Because what it does is it creates a backup system within the phone and then it transfers that onto the computer. What? I couldn't just like just create that file on the computer. Like uh, my Sony Xperia XZ1S17000. And uh, so I back up the phone and I don't know what happened, but while the phone was plugged in, uh, you know, it, the phone gets hot if it's plugged in and it's charging. That's why I use the separate little battery charger to charge the batteries. And I don't know if there's, like, water in it or something, but, like, the whole camera just fogged up, and it looked terrible. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember the camera being, like, visible. Like, it's supposed to blend in with the screen. And I think this was, like, bright and shiny. It's right there. But before I noticed that... Uh, when the phone rebooted, you know, the screen's all white because this is, you know, all white screen and then it shows a T-Mobile right there. And there's, there's like these black smudges on the screen, but it was the LCD itself. It wasn't the glass. So the screen, there was screen damage, screen damage, and then the camera had water damage. And so I went back to T-Mobile and showed them and you know like hey what can I do for you and I was like I was just here an hour ago but I was talking to somebody else the, the lady who helped me before she she went she she went home so I'm not talking to the guy to another guy and so I tell him this and he goes how long how long have you had the phone and I go I just got it an hour ago from you guys I go I just restored it and this is what I'm looking at here so they had to they couldn't just like do the warranty exchange regularly which is you know just order it through the computer their computer they had to call up and talk to you know some corporate person to to override it and get it taken care of and there's like a five dollar fee with the jump program that they have and the five dollar fee was fine the first time and i go i'm not paying it again and he goes well unfortunately we can't you know bypass it but what we do is it will be credited to your account and i said okay that's fine so they just went to the phone bill anyways uh, so then i got my replacement phone in yesterday and when i went in to get it exchanged who did i see but none, 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 none other than Christopher Mirza. Christopher Mirza is the LG guy who I talked. I don't even know if I had a podcast back then, but he is the he is the guy I spoke to a lot when I was getting my phone from uh, T-Mobile. It was, but I was at a different location and. I asked him all these questions, and he had actually called in to get some answers because he didn't have them. And so he goes, "Hey, how you doing, man? How you how you been?" And I go, "How do you like your phone?" And I go, "Oh, it's great. I'm on my uh, 
I'm coming up on my third one. And he goes, what? So I told him all the problems and he couldn't believe it. And he goes, but what he did say is he goes, you know, if you have anything, you know, there's a problem next time. What you, what you might want to do is call up LG and they'll probably send you a new one because you've had the phone for less than a year. Now, I wonder if I can even do that because I don't even have my original phone now. But that's something I want to look into. Because as much as this is a nice refurbished unit, uh, I wonder if I can even do that. Because I'm getting the phone through T-Mobile. But to get a phone from LG when it's not T-Mobile's unit. I don't know. Yeah, I'll look into that. So that was pretty silly. You try to you try to sell me on the V20, and I'm like, eh, it's not that much better than the G5. He said the camera is better, but the front camera is less, is lower in quality, but it's wide angle. So I guess if you want a, a selfie that you can take from your head to your toe, without you know a a, a being at an angle that shows off your best assets like your man tits I guess that's pretty good then right and it has a, a higher quality uh, audio but uh, so I restored this phone yesterday and we'll see how it goes uh, yeah, yesterday I had to uh, I had to go pick up my niece and nephew from school for whatever reason. It's not something I do anymore. I don't live by them, and I don't live by their school. So it's it's uh, it. I drove fifty five miles yesterday to pick them up from school and bring them home to my home, not to their home. And I I get out there, and I. F the, my my nephew's school is right next to my niece's school because he's she's in elementary he's in high school so i accidentally turned into his school first but i need to go pick her up first so i had to get back out and apparently high school's getting out too so now there's all these kids everywhere all these people trying to drive out so that was a pain and then uh, i pick her up and and I thought I, I could turn in over here at one point or at one part, but that wasn't the right area because they blocked it off using those parking space, you know, barricade things. And so I had to drive back around and I get drove in. I drove into the parking lot, which looked like I even sh I shouldn't have. But that that's where the the, you know, the sidewalk ramp was. So whatever. And I drove around, and, and all the little kids for the elementary school are, like, behind a gate like a bunch of farm animals. And, and uh, you know, so I, 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 I pull, I just, like, drive right up straight at her, and then I just point at her, you know, and I just, you know, just point. I don't, like, make any hand movements or, or nothing. I don't wave at her. I just point at her. So what does she do? She points at herself, and then she starts walking towards me. And then the teachers, <laughs> the teacher, is like, "Where are you going?" He's like, "Oh, this is my uncle." And then I roll down the window and I go, "I go, I go, hurry up, hurry up! We gotta get your brother!" And I just start yelling at her. <laughs> so she gets into the car, and and at this point, like a truck cuts me off, and now he's in front of me, so I gotta wait for him to move. Cause he he got in front of me just so he can pick up his damn kids. And I gotta wait for him to move, so I can go. And and then as I'm waiting for him to move, I you know the one the teacher that talked to her went over to talk to another teacher, and I can just see that she goes, "Is is that her? Is that her uncle? Or is that her? Is that her? Is that her dad?" And she just made this face like, "Yeah, I, I don't know, Ugh, you know, <laughs> like let's just give any kid off to some random person, and they, there's no way to really." see uh they, like they, they didn't even care they didn't even check to see like who are you i mean she said obviously my niece said i'm the uncle but again uh, so i get i get to i go to the high school and i go in there and 
I went in the wrong way and I got to go back out because <laughs> the road's blocked there too on the way that I was going. So I had to go to another area and, you know, I picked up my nephew and we're driving and we're driving. We go, I don't know if you've gone to this Genghis Grill before, but it's, it's all right. You get a bowl and you get to put your stuff in the bowl and they cook it for you on a flat top grill and it's okay you know the, the meat the, was good but for for 10 12 bucks 13 bucks nah that's not worth it went over to GameStop afterwards and uh not 10 15 bucks a person went over to GameStop and they had uh, Gears of War socks I'm sure those are those are of high quality standards it's like I think it was like the I don't know it was like a deal I was like I, I think it was 12 months of gold I think it was and then and then the socks let me see I know I got the picture somewhere oh I didn't save the picture <laughs> I didn't save the picture but I know I sent it uh, to my good buddies Rat and Burn and uh, Volt on the old Facebook Messenger. But my God, do those two like to talk. Talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. There you go. Yeah, look at that. 12 months gold. And it comes with free Gears of War socks. I didn't I didn't look at the price, but it's got to be a lot, right? It's got to be like... like uh, let me see. Excuse the sounds. Man, typing with my headphones plugged in and the microphone on is actually painful to me. I can't imagine what it looks like on the. Oh, it's pretty. It's pretty loud. I wonder. God, I need to get one of those damn arms, just so my microphone's not on the damn computer. Gears of War socks. They're not gonna have like just Gears of War socks. Let me see if they it'd be under gold, right? Where is that at? Xbox. Go gold subscriptions. Egg. G O F D gold. Huh. I'm going to say it's about 80 bucks. <laughs> 80 bucks for Gears of War socks and gold. That was fun, right? It was a waste of time. Uh, let's see. Okay. How's that? Um, yeah, that was it. That was all for Monday. That's all I really did. Uh, I've been streaming on Twitch uh, pretty good. Maybe not the last two days, but I've been pretty tired. Or I've had stuff to do, like pick up the kids. And today I had to wait for the DirecTV guy to come back. Oh my god, did I, did I even mention last time that the DirecTV guy came because the TV was like freezing and pausing. And so he comes in and he changes like an LMB, whatever the hell that thing is. I think that's like the front, like, like there's your dish and then, you know, the signal collects onto the dish that gets reflected back into this like little arm and there's like a, a, a bulb or some shit right there, receiver. And I think he replaced that. In which, you know, I asked him if it was like, you know, is it common here in Arizona? And he goes, yeah, we got to place those like once a year because of the sun. And I go, oh, of course, and, you know, nothing is ever made for this kind of heat. Anyways, like my phone. So he, I was watching, he turned on the TV and, and, and downstairs was on Comedy Central and half baked was showing so i was upstairs and he starts talking to me about half baked and jim brewer and we are 
he just started talking about Jim Brewer. I don't even remember how he started talking about it, but he started talking about Jim Brewer, and Half Baked just happened to be on. So, you know, I put it on, and we were, wa- we're watching it. I mean, we were watching, I mean, like, he, like, sat down on the couch and was watching it with me. And, you know, he, he was just having a ball. Like, he really likes Jim Brewer, the comedian, you know. And Jim Brewer's a great guy. And, but it was funny because he, he didn't really, like, he knew him as a comedian, but he didn't know him on SNL. And so I, you know, I, was, I told him about, you know, Jim Brewer on SNL when he was Gold Boy and all those characters he did. And, you know, he started playing. It was funny because he would, he was, he was talking about like certain things of his com- comedy standup. So what he did, what he did was he pulled the video up on his phone and then he kneeled down because I'm sitting in a chair. He kneeled down next to me and he held the phone because I wouldn't grab it. And he, and he was showing me clips. He showed me two clips from Jim Brewer's comedy specials, different comedy specials. And then he sat down in the couch and he started watching Half Baked with me. He's, I just got to see this one part where where he says this line, and and he goes because that's when Jim Brewer said that he w- he wasn't high at all during the movie because they wouldn't let him get high, but he was high for this one part, and I don't know. He he looked like Jim Brewer always acted and looked for this character, you know. So, so whatever, but yeah, this guy was just so excited to watch it and everything like that, and, and like he 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 knew nothing about. Oh, uh, it was a scene where Dave Chappelle uh, mentioned his first girlfriend or whatever, and it was literally like a guy in a dress, you know, but just to show how, how ugly this woman was because he had chest hair, and it was from prom or something, and like oh that looked like uh, Jamie Fox. When he was when he played uh, like like Lawanda, and he just had a confused look on him. I go Lawanda from In Living Color. Like, have you never seen that? I go it's on it's on like FX X X X or something, and it you know he, he dressed up as a woman, just like a really ugly woman with like 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 these like lips that are folded out, so you see his teeth, and he you know, had all this chest hair too, and you know, Jamie Fox is a big muscular guy. Back then, I don't, I don't remember. I don't think he is now. I don't know, but you know. So he had these huge arms, <laughs> these huge arms coming out of like a pink dress and everything, and he just didn't know what a living color was. So he had to explain. I go, that, you know, that's where uh, Tommy Davidson was and David Allen Greer and uh, right. I think so. Yeah, David Allen Greer, uh, the Wayne's Brothers, you know, uh, Jim Carrey. Uh, that's where Jennifer Lopez uh, started out. In the public eye as a f- fly girl, she was a dancer. Not a surprise that she's a dancer. And uh, I go, yeah, it's on FX. Oh, and then we were talking. And then a commercial for uh, Bud Light came on, and it had uh, Amy Schumer and Seth Rogen. And he goes, oh, I really like, I really like uh, that comedian. He goes, uh, the, the girl. And I paused in my own head, and I, that really caught me off guard. I thought he was going to say Seth Rogen, he said the comedian, because I, I don't know. Amy Schumer's okay, but I know there's a lot of controversy around her right now. Or there was anyways. I just don't follow along with it. And, uh, yeah, he said he liked Amy Schumer, but he didn't like Seth Rogen. He said he saw This is the End, and he didn't really like that movie. And I go, have you seen any of his other movies? He goes, yeah, I saw Knocked Up. I go, yeah, it's a good one. I go, but I go, you got to see, like, you know, like Superbad and, uh, Pineapple Express, because those are like referenced in This Is the End. Also, I go, I go. Seth Rogen's great. I go, he's a great writer. He's his movies are, are hilarious. So he started looking them up too, but then you know they're not on Direct TV or any of the channels, so they'd have to be on demand, and he'd have to pay for them. I go, ah, you need Netflix or Hulu or something. I'm sure they're on there. He goes, all right, I'll go check it out. So that guy, that guy really loved Jim Brewer. And then this other guy, this other guy who came in, you know, he he checked all the wires and everything to make sure all the connections were good. And he, what happened was, for this DirecTV visit, is the cable box downstairs broke. And what happened is the hard drive, I guess, failed. 
Which is funny because they they, they kind of sent that one to us like three months ago. So it shouldn't have failed, right? So obviously they sent us an old refurbished unit and the hard drive was just over its time. So I'm sure my mom was going to be excitedly happy about that. That it was replaced and that all the stuff on the hard drive is gone. Oh, downstairs. <sighs> downstairs is the main hard drive. The main one that she uses to record all her stories and whatever. I don't remember what I was... I got off track. So anyways, I've been streaming a lot on Twitch lately. And, and I've been doing... Uh, what I've been streaming is I'm making a Winamp skin of Studioopolis from Sonic Mania. Because a lot of people seem to be really into the Sonic Mania right now, and and when and, you know Studiopolis is a really cool looking stage, and and you know Winamp has a really old skin, so and and I use it daily because I still use it for my Green Hill Zone skin, and so I'm trying to do that again with this. Of course, it's not going to be a dancing crab, but it'll have Vaudeville Eggman up there, so that's still pretty okay. Uh, but it's just man, it's just taking forever. Like, I, I stream, like, maybe one to five hours at a time when I'm on this stuff. And what I'm doing is is the video I have is in 1080p. So I got to, and, you know, it's encoded on YouTube because it's a polygon uh, video. It's, like, eight minutes of gameplay, 12 minutes of gameplay, and there's no commentary. And, you know, there's a lot of looking around. So I get a, I can get some good shots of 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 the the aesthetics of the stage the sprites. So I gotta I gotta like take a screenshot and I put it in Photoshop and you know I like shrink it to the size I need and I basically trace over the sprites. You know not nothing too uh, fancy. I'm tracing over them just to get the general shape. But all the colors get muddled at at that point. They're already pretty muddy to begin with, and then to shrink them down. You know, they kind of get, the detail gets lost. So I redraw the sprite over it, and I recolor it up, and, and you know, I, I swear I bet there's a, they still follow a palette setup, as that's what it looks like, but my colors I know are all over the place. I like 35 different blues, when I'm sure there's only like eight. And, you know, but they all, they, you know, everything has like a, a, a specific design. There's, you know, a lot of usage of yellow, of, of pinks, and purples because of the background is all purple so that looks really cool but it's kind of a pain in the ass also so I'm redoing all these sprites and it's been a good while since I've done any sprite work so I really wanted to do this and while I'm doing this you know just like when I first redid my my the graphics on my my page you know I started getting followers and a lot you know people were viewing as opposed to when I'm playing a game I don't really get that many viewers because, you know, I'm playing a game and there's all these people watching all these other people playing games. There's all these people, you know, playing Halo. There's like, you know, 40, 50 streamers playing Halo, you know. So it's real hard for anybody to notice you. But when you're in the pixel art category of the creative section, you know, there's there's maybe, maybe, you know, one other person there with you. And... Uh, you know, people sit, people sit around. And, you know, I've talked to a couple of people. It's been really engaging. They really like it. I like when uh, people stick around and, uh, they, you know, they enjoy the music. The music I've been playing is just all Sonic music. It's either from the games or the LPs that were out, uh, like, in the in the uh, mid to late 90s when Sega released all these, or, well, just all the 90s, really. Sega so released a lot of like extra tracks and stuff like that for Sonic music. And then there's a bunch of overclock remix music that I got from their website, OC uh, Remix. Is it OCR.com, I think? And, you know, just they do a lot of remixes for video games. So their music sounds pretty great. So I got all that shit there. And I'm listening to that, you know, and people are coming in and they're talking and, you know, you know. You know, having five concurrent viewers is, is amazing, you know? People talking is, is amazing, and it's fun. A lot of times it's quiet. More time, more, it's more quiet than discussion, you know? And either, either way, that's fine. 
and I've I got I got five you know followers in one day, so that's that's amazingly exciting, and then five followers throughout the rest of the days too. And so you know I'm just gonna keep doing this. I'm just gonna keep uh, working on this. Like the main player is done, like like the the base of the sprites are. None of the animations that I've made yet, and I haven't programmed nothing. So I just have the artwork for it. And now I'm working on the playlist right now. So the main player was a lot of work. The other ones, hopefully not so much. The other ones are more just like background. You know, simple, flat surface. You know, this is a simple surface. It's not like little characters or nothing like that. Because the, the main one had the, the monitors, the item boxes. They had those weird star balls. They had the van, which I, I, I might have to fix because it doesn't look right. I feel like it doesn't. I mean, it looks good by itself, but if you compare it to the other one, it looks a little like it has an overbite almost. <laughs> so I got to just like check that out. And then uh, I put the projector in there with the projection screen where it has a da the dancing Eggman. Now, there's actually a lot of animations that I got to do for that. So that's going to be a while. I'm thinking I'm going to do that one last. And then I also have that uh, that the, the director's action board. Uh, that'll tell you the time and the track and the song name on it. And then I had that Eggman chair that rises up. And that's the volume. And then I made the rings, which are the, you know, minimize, uh, close. I don't know if I'm going to do a shade. Uh, it's, a, it's a smaller player. But maybe I just gotta. I, I, didn't, I didn't draw anything up, but I have everything else drawn out. Uh, so I'm gonna keep working on that, and I'll, I'll be streaming that a little later today, uh, after I get the video for this up on the podcast. God, dude! I yet, speaking of the of, of the podcast video, I was playing. Uh, I ranked up in free for all arena last night. And I, I, I missed the last season because I just didn't care. And that was garbage. Like, I do not know those maps because they, they changed all the weapon layouts. Like, there's no longer Suppressor on Empire. Uh, you know, next to the rockets. In front of the rockets, so. Man, oh, dude, shit. Yesterday, there was this, some bitch who, who got the sniper. And I spawned and he killed me. But I spawn next to him, you know. Like he's he's up on the bridge by the you know the bridge that connects to the shotgun area, and blue, and he's there and he shoots me, because he's standing back on the stairs, for blue, upstairs, and you know I spawn in blue and he shoots me, and then like, bam, 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 like one shot. He, I just see like his name just light up the board, and I go, "Holy shit!" I go, "What am I doing playing against this guy?" I go, "I don't want to play this stuff. I like having fun. I don't like being as people are saying now, right? Sweaty. I, I don't. I don't. I don't like taking things too seriously you now in games. Not no. Uh, I don't know. And, and what sucked is I, I like kept playing against the same goddamn people over and over again, and I hate that shit. Give me like new people, and then I'm you know since I haven't ranked, I'm playing against like the whole gamut of champions and onyx, diamonds and shit like that. And sure, I was an onyx, you know, when I first started, but I don't want to be an onyx anymore. None of that shit's fun. But once he lost a sniper rifle, man, I was. <laughs> Whenever I got to him, I was just killing him with that AR. I love it when they when they crouch, as they're you know walking back and forth, and they crouch, as if you know all that spray that I'm doing for my AR is going to stop me from getting a headshot. Because it doesn't matter; it's an AR. You don't get headshots no matter what. First couple of games are really great, and then like the last five, I just did. I just bombed. I could not get anything going. I I must have had under ten kills. In the last five games. And what sucked is, you know, every time I found somebody to start shooting at, before I killed him, some some bitch would come around the corner and kill both of us. And I hated that shit. 
Every fucking time that happens. That happens. Every fucking time. Of course, at that point, I was just playing regularly. You know, I didn't. I didn't play like I. I, I did the last time I ranked into Onyx, which is just hang back and just watch. And that's what I gotta do, right? Just, just. That's not. That's not how I like to play. I like to just run in there, like a like a dumbass, and then just start throwing punches. Oh man! And these guys were jumping everywhere. Everybody loved to jump, and I'm like, oh my god, my my analog is too slow. I can't like turn around to to, to follow them because I'm I, I'm always able to just like. To follow them by looking at them as they jump around and punch them and everything like that. But I have to go, my controller is going too slow. So I go to the, the my look sensitivity. It's at 8. I go, I'm at 8 and I still can't follow them? Like, what the hell? One guy. Man, one guy. He was... What was this? What uh, Riptide, I think it's called? Mm, no. Maybe? Fathom. That's what it's called. It's called Fathom. And... They moved the camel from down in the center to up top on the, on the bridge or whatever. And then they moved the railgun from up top to down in the center. So, you know, I'm fighting with this guy down in the center. Not for the railgun, but just because we happen to both be there. And he's, like, jumping on both sides and everything. He's just, like, jumping everywhere. And I go, what the hell? I'm having a hard time, like, hitting this guy? And, you know, it is, I can't shoot him. But he's because he's jumping everywhere, and then I couldn't punch him. So he finally he's he like right when he gets out the out the door, I turn around and I assassinate him. And what was my assassination right now? Fisticuffs. I threw him down and just started Agent Smith punching him right in the face. You know, oh that was good. I gave him a couple of tea bags too on that one. And after that, he was pissed and he started teabagging me all this time, and I would teabag him. And every game we played, we were just teabagging each other. And we're at the bottom. <laughs> we're at the bottom of the scoreboard, and we're just pissed at each other. And then, and the last game I played was Molten, and it was like the first time I've played Molten. Oh man, my first game was on Mercy when I started doing this, and I was like, that was the first time I played Mercy. But I remember it from Halo Four, so that's okay. But I didn't realize that the saw and the gravity hammer spawned right next to each other. Anyways, on Molten, my first time playing it, uh, like right at the end of the game. I I see the I see the guy who I see the leader you know I don't have a problem killing the leader but it's like everybody else I get I, you know like one on one I can kill anybody but when whenever I get double triple team I'm I'm fucking screwed every time and so the leader's just like crouched and hiding and I kill him and but he threw a grenade and it blew up an explosive barrel behind me. And what happens? It's that same guy with the teabag just came out of nowhere and just starts furiously teabagging and hitting my corpse. Even though he had nothing to do with my death. And while he's doing that, a guy Spartan charges from behind him and the game is over. <laughs> he was the final death of the game. Uh, I sent, when, when that video finally uploaded, oh, I, an Xbox Live, I don't know what happened. But it used to be that it would automatically delete videos for you when you ran out of space. Now it's not doing that. So I, so I have to stop, delete all the videos from my Xbox Live uh, storage, and then I can upload new videos. So when that finally happened, like an hour later, when that video finally uploaded, I sent it over to that guy. And all I said was, you know, you got to admit, it was funny. And I'm saying, you know, when he got, assa when he got killed. But also because he got killed while I, you know, he was teabagging me, and you know he was just cool about it. He's like, ah, you know, I, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't, you know, just, just things just got heated and whatever. And and I got no hard feelings, so, you know, friend requests and all that bullshit, all around. I don't record any of my games, <laughs> any of my free for all games. Uh, I got, I got. It just was not doing good. I think I had like platinum three or some shit. I mean, you might as well just kick me in the balls. Give me a bronze. Come on. And give me a break. I don't want any of this crap. Of course, play a game of platinum threes. Destroyed them. The, uh, even the diamond and onyx I was in that fucking game didn't have a chance. But, yeah. Of course, at that point, I was hanging back and hiding a lot more and. 
I don't like playing like that. I don't like playing like Sandman. That's what Sandman does. He hides and everything, and he has like two deaths. He may not have the highest kill, but he'll have two deaths or some shit. I think it's... Oh, uh, I've uploaded a bunch of pictures on Instagram. I'm in the process right now of uploading the Comic-Con pictures onto the Facebook. Um, I'm just taking forever to... Uh, Add, I'm like I'm like uh, t- not tagging, but I'm commenting on almost all the pictures. Just you know the name of the character and what series they're from, if I know them, um, or have like a vague idea, and I can look it up. Some of the characters I have no idea who I'm looking at, and it's probably like a One Piece character or something. <laughs> but you know I got that up, so so that'll be up today. Um, face uh, Instagram's taking a little while just because I'm trying to figure out like what pictures to put up. I don't want to put up all of them because I had like 200, no, I have like 400 pictures I think that I put in on Facebook from Comic Con of individual cosplayers, you know. So with 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 Instagram, I'm like grouping same pictures or same characters. Like I got uh, two pictures of of Lilu from Fifth Element, you know. I have like one picture that has. Four Harley Quinns in it, and then uh, I don't know. I'm just that's what I'm doing. So that's what I'm working on here today. I'm going to finish uploading those pictures for the Comic Con today. I'm going to stream later on. Uh, we'll continue working on the playlist and stuff like that uh, with the pixel art. Uh, if you guys know anything about like pixel or at is it a sprite a e sprite? This is a you know both pixel editing program. Uh, you know, tell me what you guys think about them because I'm interested in either one. I don't know. I know they like they got the onion skinning, and you know, they're going to be great for animation. And they're more focused on pixel editing and pixel artwork than Photoshop is. So, because of like with Photoshop, I got to like magnify in like eight, nine hundred percent to get the right size. So, that's it for me. Uh, I'll talk to you guys next week. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm done. Have a good one. May go push the stop button right here. Click. captured. pillars.
Wreck confirmed. at the broken pillars. Six space portal at the broken pillars. Elites coming through. Fight from the shadow. Covenant at the Temple Overwatch. You hear that? Shields back Mike up. glad to see you. Confirmed.
halfway to victory. I do not. Champion. Incoming Prometheans at the Temple Overwatch. Incoming Prometheans! Confirmed. Hi there. Oh, 
We're nearing victory. Bring the X! Hostile Mantis! Level 7 Rex available. Confirmed. Confirmed. Prometheans at the Temple Overwatch. Wreck confirmed. Incoming Prometheans. Wreck confirmed. Warden Eternal is at the Temple Overwatch. Eliminate him to win. Level 8 Rex available. Shields are full. Teammates eliminated a battalion leader. Excellent work, Spartan. That's a victory.